ourselves the power of the city, the power of Satan, the misconception of life, intellectual mistake, believing that I can be happy by accumulating things stuff and money. The mistake of the internet. Only Christ can be a million and four weeks alive. I want to speak to us this morning, this afternoon, from Gospel of the Father, John, in chapter. And verse number 10, we fall up 10, especially. That we stand for the reason. Gospel of the chapter. Let us read together, please. The thief come, not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Thank you for your obedience. You may be seated this Keep that scripture on the screen. So, first of all, what was Satan's time? What Satan came is he comes but for to steal. Steal the knowledge of God for you, to steal the fact that in Christ all of your sins can be forgiven. He steal the truth about God, and that is God is a loving Father, and He will not withhold anything from those who love Him, from those who walk a life with Him. He steals. And to kill, he killed by leading the unsaved, leading those who believe not our God into habits and practices and to believe that will kill your dream, that will kill your potential, kill possibility. You rise above your circumstances. Unfortunately, many are born into it. He killed and he destroyed. He'll destroy your relationship with God. He'll destroy your family. He'll destroy it. and on and on and on. That's his purpose. The sad thing about it is so many are playing into his hands. The sad thing about it is many come to the house of God. And, and say God's son, man. Fellowship with the truck people, but yet at the same time, there's no know, victory. That's sad. Victory is in Jesus. And when we say in Jesus, it's in following Jesus, submitting to Jesus, allowing him to become Lord of our life. That's victory. Obeying Learning of him, acquiring knowledge and understanding, or as he gives wisdom to guide you in every aspect of your life. You see, it's not enough to come to church. I said to you so many times coming to church, sitting in the pew, coming into the house of God, does not make you a Christian any more than going into his house to make you a chief. I'll go on you to McDonald's and lift your hand. Yes, sir. All right, man. All right, man. That's what I'm And so then, the question is, can we know that we have eternal life? The answer is yes. Eternal, our is a word that <coughs> is used on the of God. So eternal is more than everlasting. Eternal life is more than everlasting life. The law person, the person who wants to be here, might have a lasting life. Life that lasts forever. Because we're alive. But eternal is not only an everlasting life, duration of life, it is also, it is a quality of life. Life that soars above mere existence is life of the soul that is not predicated 
on things and stuff. It's like in abundance. It is God-like, a god that life. And when you think about God, nothing can be done God. Nothing can overthrow God. Nothing can overrule God. And so then we have to talk about the word that we use on that God. Then it means that we can have a life that cannot be destroyed, that cannot be uh, dissipated by circumstances, conditions, or situations. So it means that even if things are bad, intrinsically bad, I still can have joy. I still have joy. Even when my back is against the wall, even when your back is against the wall, you still can know that your Savior stands between. And you can know no matter what comes your way, you can know that all things are working together for good to those who love God. And you know that we can indulge in a night that's a fact, but joy comes in the morning. That is also a fact. In other words, if you hang in there and trust God and believe Him and not get bent out of shape, God will move His hand in your feet. He'll, 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 he'll move your trouble. Yeah. But until he moves your trouble, he'll give you grace to yeah. heal with your trouble. Yeah. That's, that's what this yeah. is about. And it's something that you can experience on a daily basis. Yeah. Not just on Sunday. Yeah. But on a daily basis. More than more, as you live your life, you can know that God is present and God is working things out for your good. It may not look like it, it may not feel like it, it may not even taste like it or smell like it. But the point of emphasis is that if God be for it, doesn't matter who is against you or what is against you. And you can learn this and you can know this only as you enter into an intimate relationship with Christ. That is through obedience. You have to study His Word, you have to pray, and you have to ask God to make Himself real and powerful in your heart. And manifest Himself in all circumstances. But then also you have to pray that God will help you to acquire patience. Because you see, Grandma was right when she said He would not come when you when you come, when you take me on the come, when you work for you to come. Matter of fact, they might get worse before they get better. Yeah. But, but you got to learn how to wait on them. And if you're ready in the morning chapter right there, you know that they that wait on the Lord tell them to do that. And they shall mount up with wings as And blessed, you know, before you saw Blessed is the man who walk and not. Come, stand now and sit now. But his delight is in the Lord. And in God's law, better things stand now. Then he goes on to say that those types of people are like trees planted by the river of the Lord. They planted by the river of They are like trees planted. Planted. That's a little like God. God has put you exactly where He He didn't throw you out anymore. He put you where you want. And He put you by, 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 by rivers of water. You see, the river provides water for the root and keep it fresh. And so God will keep your life fresh. Y'all hear what I'm saying? God will keep your life fresh if you trust, if you trust Him, no matter what. You can rise up, you can find purpose, you can make a contribution where you are. Yes, That's the message of the God. Yes, How can you really know that we have each other life? One day can change your whole situation. Yes. And one day has changed our entire life. Yes. And that's a good Friday. Mm -hmm. I want you to look at five. Look at you. 23, 24. We're going to have it on the board. Watch how you can know, and know how you can know that you have eternal life. Eternal life is a present possession. You don't have to die to get eternal life. Eternal is a present possession. Oh, yeah. And so then, the scripture says, and Pilate gave sentence 
that it should be as they require. A part why? Part by allowing them to take Jesus and crucify Jesus. Okay? Now let's look at Luke 23 and 43. And Jesus said unto the thief, Verily I say unto thee, The day shall thou be with me in paradise. Now first of all, he had forgiven this thief. He had forgiven it cried out to him. Jesus said unto the thief, Verily I say unto you today, that I'll be with me in paradise. Forgiveness. You have been forgiven by God. If you have really placed your faith in Jesus Christ, and you have accepted him as your Savior, you are forgiven. Not just of past sins and present sins, you are forgiven of future sins. Yes. All of your sins have been forgiven. Because of the work of Jesus Christ. Now. Forgiveness. That's your joy. That's, that's, that's your joy. Some, some, some can't feel good in church unless a good song is sung. But if that's the case, then what you going to do on Monday and Tuesday? It's the knowledge of the fact that I am forgiven no matter what I have done, how much I have done, no matter how often I fail. Jesus Christ, his blood cleanses from all sin. The greatest news that ever hit the earth was that God was willing to forgive sin. That's the greatest news. You, you thought that the greatest news you heard was when you, when, when, you, when, 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 when the, your lawyer or whoever he was fell out your tax return and said you're getting $3,000 back. That's not the greatest news. That's going to you won't spend that. You thought the greatest news was when you open the morning after the time for you and you find out that bill is after sale. That's not the greatest news. <laughs> the greatest news that you could ever hear is that God, through Jesus Christ, yeah. is willing to forgive you for all yeah. of your sin. That's 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 something yeah. material. That's yeah. that's rejoicing material. Surgery and then through uh, uh, going through, through through rehabilitation, through the muscles in my back and for the walk. I'm on the uh, uh, the carport in the back of my house with my wife and my nephew is there and I'm crying, wailing, and crying, can't stop. And my nephew came and said, "Uncle, it's gonna be all right." And finally, when I got a major composure, I said, "I'm not crying because of the pain. I couldn't hardly walk. I had pain." But I'm crying because at this moment, God has impressed upon me for you all of your sins have been forgiven. Peace with God. You can have the peace of God. You can have joy. You can, you, you, you can rest assured that in this house of your tabernacle was a dissolved, you got a building of God not made with hand. Why? Because that very thing that a your relationship with God, that is the fear with the blessed eternity, has been moved. You are shocked today because God has forgiven you for all your sins. And then he says, Yeah, now, this day shall now be with me in paradise. That's reception, forgiveness of sin, and then reception. He received the sin. You see here, the, the case where the fight became last and the last became first. Well, what are you saying? What are you saying? I'm saying this, that that first thing really yeah. come down with the cross. Save yourself. Save us in the process. He was the first one with that second. He said, look, we deserve what we're getting. And then he turns to Jesus and he said, now when you get it, you get it. I want to get in your presence for a little while, but something about being in your presence convinced me. The devil got a dead head. Something in your presence convinced me that you spent all that I've done. You can accept me and willing to accept me today. When you get into your kingdom, not you to get into your kingdom, but there's a certainty about what he said. When, when you get into your kingdom, remember me. Jesus is this 
is it? Reception. Yeah. Reception. God has received you. Uh -huh. He has received you. And sometimes we cannot shout and rejoice in God's reception of us uh, uh, because we are too busy holding on to the guilt and the memory of what we have done wrong. Turn it loose. Let it go. Live in the freedom that God has given you. Romans 5 will stand fast in the liberty where you Christ have set you free and be not again in heaven in your forever. Bonded. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may never be yours. Sure, you made a mistake. Now you messed up. Yesterday is wrong. But turn it loose. God says, if you turn to me, I'll turn to you. I'll cast your sins behind my back. And I'll remember them no more. Walk in the love. The beautiful love. Live in the freedom that Christ has purchased for you. Forgive them. Is all right, God? Forgive them. He has forgiven us and has received us into his kingdom. You are a child of God, a soldier of the cross, follower of the Lamb. You've been blessed for all things to bless them. You've been made to sit in heavenly places. You're more than a conqueror. You don't have to fight your battle anymore because God will fight your battle. He is a refuge. He is your strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. I know that, Reverend. I go through battles and shadows of death. Even when you go through the battles and the shadows of death, you have to fear. You don't have to fear evil because my God, your God, is with you, holding your hand, guiding you every step. Every time you get it out of the way. Yeah. 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 That's why you can say I'm happy with Jesus. Hello? Somebody that says you can have the whole world, but give me Jesus. He is precious to my soul. He is joy in the midst of sorrow. He is bright in the solving of it. Water in God. A doctor in a sick room. A lawyer in a sick room. Yes, right. Give me Jesus. Yes, right. He has a way of brightening up the day. He has a way of assuring you that you're not alone in whatever you go through. He is with you. He wants to get involved in your life. If you want to get involved in your life, and so often we make mistakes. And so often we choose the wrong person. But sometimes the wrong person chooses us. And God said, if you let me get involved, I enable you to see like I see. And I enable you to choose the way I choose. If you let me get involved, I'll show you what the best deal is. You want to get involved in your Don't let the devil fool you and keep you away from total dependence on God because again, he shows you things that yes, are undesirable yeah, yeah, yeah. and bad habits. Yeah. God will move in your life right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear what I say? Yeah. You want to move in your life right now. Yeah. You think you need money, but God said, not right now, but you need mercy. Yeah. You think you need gold, but not right now. God said, you need gold, grace. God said you need to change your mind, a change of attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God said you need to look at things a little differently. You need to commit your will to me. You need to stop trusting in your understanding and acknowledge me that I will direct your path. Let me get involved in helping you to raise your children. Let me get involved in that marriage. Let me get involved in your life. Stop spreading your wheels, he said. Stop trying to do it in your own strength. Stop depending on your own intellect. He says in his word, that is the way that sin is right for man, but the end only destruction. You and I have made enough bad choices to realize that we can't hold our own step. We need our step all the time. And so then you see forgiveness, you see reception, and then look at John. 19, chapter 26 and 27 verses. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved, he said unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then said 
he to the disciples, Behold thy mother, and from that hour that disciple took her into his own home. And so then you're seeing forgiveness. You can know that you have eternal life because you're the forgiver. You're seeing reception. He has received you. You're a child of the king. You're a citizen of heaven. And now what you see here is provision. He makes provision for his mother. And then he makes provision for John. Mary and now has security. And God has given you security. You're secure in him. I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. Yeah. Thank you, Come on. The said, when the wicked, even my enemies, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Yeah. I'm not out of time. Security. You have security in him. Security in him. No matter what comes your way, God will provide you with the grace that you need, he will provide you with himself. Yes. You have to live your life in him. Yes. Through him. By his divine, holy, holy power. You can't do it yourself. I can't do it myself. But God will infuse you with power. Did that? What Paul said, he said, I can do all things through Christ. Not by myself, through Christ. Not through my education, through Christ. Not through my connection, through Christ. I can do all things through Christ who infilled this his strength in me. He gives you strength to go on. He gives you strength to love your love of He gives you strength to forgive. He gives you strength to let bygones be bygones and to go forward with your life. God will give you strength. So then you see provision. And God has made much provision for us. He provided us with his son. He provided us a savior. He provided us his word. He provided us his Holy Spirit. And his Holy Spirit regenerates us, baptizes us into the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit inhabits us. He is our seal. A seal shows that something is, for, is, is pressure. A seal shows ownership. God has given you and I and his Holy Spirit to show that he owns us. And every time Satan gets ready to come against us, God says, I, I, I'll let you tempt him. I'll let you go through some stuff with him. But don't forget Satan and I own Trouble coming, he said, I own yes. And trouble you can only last a little while. That's a while, right? But you know, it's up there. Yeah. 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 Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Regeneration. He sees you. But not only that, he empowers you. He gives you strength to go on. Strength to do the way, the will of God. Yes. Provision. He has provided for then he has provided the Christian church. That's why you hear me call me all the time. Come to the house of God. Come to Bible class. Come to Sunday school. Come to men ministry. Come to women ministry. He has provided fellowship. You can't live the Christian life all by yourself. You need some help. You need a shoulder sometime and cry again. You need an encouraging word every now and then. You need to know that you matter. Not only to your mom and your dad, but you need you matter to other folks. Yeah. And that God has endowed you with gifts and talent and ability, and you have to contribute yeah. to the upbuilding of God's kingdom here yeah. on yeah. You have something to do to contribute. Yeah. And when you stay away, you deprive the church of what belongs to the church. And then you deprive us of depositing in your life the thing that God has given us. So that's why we need you. But you need us. That's the nature of the Christian church. That's how God has made us. And then let's look at it. Come to a close here. Let's look at Matthew 27 and 46. And about the night hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, come back tonight. That is to say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? It should have been you and I forsaken by God. Oh, yeah. 
But because Jesus took our place, yes. then you and I need not be forsaken. Yes. So what do we see here? We see substitution. Yes. You can know you have eternal life because God has substituted Christ yes. in your place to suffer the punishment that you were supposed to suffer. Yes. We call this atonement. Yes, sir. You took our place. Yes, and I told you in the that he deserved to run your life and to rule your life and to control your life. Why? Because he's your substitute. Yes. He suffered what you and I were supposed to suffer. Yes, the sentence of death was passed against you and I. The sentence of eternal banishment from God, the presence of God, was passed upon you and I. And Jesus stepped up and said, Let's not take it. Yes. And so at this moment, God has to abandon him because God cannot look upon sin and, 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 and uh, condone the sinner. So what happened, God has to abandon, turn his back on him because at this moment, Jesus has become sin for us. The Bible says he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus has become sin and God has to turn his back. God does not look upon sin. I don't want to live one moment out of the presence of God. My Lord. Think about what your life would be and how it would be for you if God would have turned it back. Amen. Who would be sitting here today? If God would have turned it back on you, there'd be no oxygen for you to breathe. There'd be no food for you to eat. There'd be no water for you to drink. There'd be no protection of you on the highway. If God was to turn it back on you, it is in Him you live, you move, you have your being. Every moment of the day, God is involved in your life. Yes. And if that's the case, we ought to feel a sense of obligation. We ought to feel a sense of commitment. And the question is, how much do I owe Him? And He said, you can't give it because the goal is the simple that all to me. He said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even ask you. But what can I give? For all of your blessings, what can I render unto the Lord? Paul's answer that question in Romans 12 and 1. He said, present your body a living sacrifice. In the Old Testament, there was a day sacrifice. The animal had to be killed. God said, I don't need a day sacrifice now. My son had died. I need a living sacrifice. You all don't love him for that. You all don't obey him for that. I cannot understand how folks can hear the gospel. And hear the people and have the word of God explained and seeing the word of God and yet look at God and say, I'm not going to do it. You need to question your salvation. You need to question the reader or not. The reader is going to be the same one. You might be a church member. I'm not condemning anybody. I'm not judging. But it might be you are a church member and not a Christian. Why? In chapter, in this chapter, Jesus said, My sheep know my voice. Yeah. And a strange voice, they will not follow. Do you know his voice? Yeah. Do you know his voice? Yeah. His voice is the voice of truth. Yeah. His voice is the voice that aims to help you, to bring you up, not tell you down. And he calls for you. Yes, Lord. Or rather, I'm not going to call. He calls for you through me. He calls for you through the circumstances of your life. He calls for you, come. And I make everything my way. Come. And I prepare a table for you. Come. And I give you the peace that has escaped you for not so long. Come. Come to me. It's possible to come to the house of God, but never come to the Lord, house, the Lord of the house. Did you hear what I said? It's possible to come to the house of the Lord and not come to the Lord of the house. Let's look at John 19 and 28. And this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said I first. What you see here is involved. He called you to get involved. How do we see involvement in this verse? He said, I thirst. He made the ocean. He made the rivers. He made the light. He turned water into wine. 
Don't you think he could have provided for himself a drink? Yeah. But he wanted others to get involved. Yeah. He can save this world without you and I. Yeah. He can blast the Supreme Court and other off the face of heaven. But he has called the church to be a witness. He said, I'm not out of the world. And he turned around and said to the church, you don't know the world. He said, go ahead and teach my word. Go and make disciples of all men. I want you involved. He want you involved. He want us involved. We heard about the beliefs and situations. We heard about that. And that's not the, the worst of it. When we were talking to the missionaries in Canada that went to Guatemala, Honduras, in the situation in Guatemala, Honduras, in the southern tip of Central America, right off from Belize, they, they are worse than worse shape than the Belize. The children walk around and picking food out of the garbage can on the street. God says to the first community and the other visitor, he said, get involved. Get involved with people to alleviate the pain and suffering that so many. 100,000 Christians being persecuted every day. Many are dying in Syria. Many are dying in Lebanon. God said, get involved. Pray for your brothers and your sisters who are going through persecution. So we before over 40 million Christians have been put to death since, since Christ came. He wants us to be involved. He wants us to be involved. My combination and my aim and my goal is not to preach in a way that's hope can be satisfied simply from what they are filled with their aid. But to be moved by what they hear with their hearts. Yes. Am I coming to do this? Yes. I want us to take off our black suit and not make that. When we take off our robe and when we leave our coats, yes. go out into the world. Yes. To go out into our community and among our family folks and share the love of Jesus. Yes. That's what God wants. Yes, that is in problem. Let's look at John 19. Okay? Jesus therefore had received the benefit. He said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the goal. You can know that you have eternal life because one day, this life, as we know it, is going to come to a close. We see completion. Jesus completed his work. They hated him. They lied on him. They isolated him, they ostracized him. They put a cross on his shoulder, they feared him in his eye. But yet he completed his work. They call him the other brother, they say, You're the you in line with the devil. You're an apostle. But yet he completed the work. And I'm telling you, if you give yourself to the Lord and if you trust God with all your heart, I don't care how difficult the task, I don't care how bad it may be, how long it may take, let me tell you, God will give you grace to come speak to me. Some say, when my work on my kids done, I can say it another time, I'll be so happy in my home over there that the Lord has to pay. Am yeah, I helping somebody? You see, that's why I preach, I preach, that's why I preach. Now, the way I preach is because one day, the last chapter of my life will be written. Yes. And the last page will be done. Yes, and then when I finish my book, my life book, yes. don't write on that again. Yes. It, it won't be the end. When I finish this, when I pass off of the seat, it won't be the end. It will be just the beginning. Yes. Yes. And some down in my life will be sweeter from there. Yes. It's going to be the beginning of joy, the beginning of bliss. The beginning of perpetual happiness where a situation and condition cannot touch it. Yeah. I can't get a bad telephone call. Every day will be like Sunday and Sabbath I have no real Why? Because we have completed Paul said, Complete the journey no matter what it takes. Complete the journey. Yeah. What qualifies you to say it, Paul? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll preach and fall against peace at that 
I was kicked out of Thessalonica. Okay. I went through all kinds of stuff in Louisville. Yeah. He said, but tell me that this thing is, I thought it was time. Yes, sir. I kept the faith and I finished my course. Yes. And now I'm going to get my, my reward. Yes. This is what you got to do. Bible says, set your affections on things above, not things of the earth. Pity is here now, but there's a bigger pity coming out of the water. And so there is commitment. Be faithful to God. Be faithful in your relationship with your fellow man. Be committed to serving God, the Lord, with gladness. You can trust God at the end of the day to give a blessed eternity. And then the last book I want to read. Of oh, course, that's the last one. Okay, the last book I want to read is Luke 23, 46. When Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. And having said this, he gave up the Lord. What you see here is commitment. You see, when you walk with God and you talk with him, when you Allow him to be involved in your life. And when you give yourself totally to him, you can rest assured that God has, God has committed himself to you. And you commit yourself to him. All will be well. Yeah. I didn't say all will be trouble free. All will be difficult. Yeah. But there is a God in hand in your life. And there is a peace that God can give to my heart. And you can go to bed at night when the children are long away from home on college campuses and living in other places. You can have a peace in knowing that God is watching over you. That's all. God's watching over you. can have that peace. And God will, by the script, the song say, be not dismayed, whatever the time, God will take care of you. Give yourself fully to God. Well, I don't really know how to do it. That's what we hear from the Bible class. That's what we hear from the Sunday school women ministry. That's what we hear. We try to share with you the knowledge of God so that we can go together. Yes, sir. Not just about having a good time for three hours inside of a building, but it's living a life of victory seven days a week. So that God consciousness 24 hours a day. Have a good time. Yeah, that's a good one out there. God bless you. And God bless you. Thank 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 you.